Welcome to Fight News Now. I'm John Pollock, along with John Ramdina and Robin Black, taking you through the news. And we're looking ahead to what is going to be a very big card at the end of the month, the biggest one that we're ever going to see here on Fight Network, maybe of all time. Who knows? It's going to involve Michael Bisping and the returning Anderson Silva headlining this card at 185 pounds. Very important fight, I think, for both individuals. I think a lot of people are curious to see what are we going to see out of Anderson Silva. I mean, it was it was hardly a stellar year with the legacy of Anderson Silva in 2015 and, and what kind of reception he is going to get fighting in London against Michael Bisping on the 27th. Yeah, this is an awesome fight, and we're so fortunate to have it here. We know it's going to do crazy numbers, but uh, Michael Bisping, he has been the bad guy. He's... He's not afraid to talk a big game because Michael Bisping always brings it. Whether he wins or loses, Michael Bisping is always in shape. We're always seeing new tools from Michael Bisping. One of his biggest attributes is the fact that he just constantly pressures his opponent. Anderson Silva, pinpoint accurate. Again, you know, who did he lose to? Well, he lost to Chris Weidman. We all recognize how good Chris Weidman actually is. Anderson Silva has already cemented his place in mixed martial arts history. He has impacted a generation. Many people consider Anderson Silva the, the greatest fighter to ever step inside of the cage. He's made a lot of money. What type of performance are we going to see from him? I think we're going to see a typical Anderson Silva performance. He's got a good opponent in Michael Bisping. He knows Michael Bisping is going to be training because essentially if Michael Bisping can beat Anderson Silva, a whole bunch of new doors open up for Michael Bisping. It's all about where Anderson Silva's head is at. That's what the whole deal is because Michael Bisping is a very tough fight. He's the most underrated fighter yep. probably in the entire ever. UFC ever. I mean, I don't know why. Maybe Americans haven't seemed to take to him, although I think when he sits at that desk wearing a suit, they like him. So I think maybe he's turned that around. But he's, his fundamentals are extraordinarily good, and he doesn't get hit a lot. That's something maybe he gets kicked in the head recently a little more than he, he should, but he's very, very good at being not there when you throw. His fundamentals are excellent. The way you beat a guy like Anderson, who's a little outside the box, is with really good fundamentals. So it's, uh, it's a very tough fight to come back. If you're Anderson Silva, you go and you watch Saturday night's Mike Pyle fight. Mike Pyle, at 40 years old, looked phenomenal, was confident, moved well, believed in his tools. Anderson has to believe in his tools. He needs to go in there as Anderson Silva, not as a, the artist formerly known as Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva, 40-year-old Anderson Silva needs growth, but it's going to be a cool fight, man. I'm going to go and try to break down both guys going into it. And the, the good part about that, you go back and you watch every single performance that they've had. The hard part about that is we don't know which Anderson Silva ones are relevant to now because mm -hmm. we haven't been in the gym with him. He didn't look all that great against our man Nick Diaz. That was, and that was a fight that is certainly going to come under a lot of scrutiny because of everything that came out of that. It's curious as you look at, at what exactly is fueling Anderson Silva. Is it simply not wanting to go out on the note he did? I mean, a no contest is what it goes down in history as against Nick Diaz. Is it the fact that he still believes he has a lot of quality performances left, left at this stage of the game? I think he's pretty much ruled out fighting for a, for a title going for that. So what is necessarily motivating him? We, I, we don't know. No, I think one of the reasons what you have to look at is that Anderson Silva is an old school martial artist. He's been doing this for a long, long time. It's not like this new crop. It's like, okay, I can get into mixed martial arts because, you know, I tried to get into football. I just wasn't good enough so I can make money and I can be famous going down this route. Anderson Silva fighting in Mecca, there was no fame. He's a Muay Thai guy who expanded his horizons by adding jiu-jitsu and wrestling and so on and so forth and became the greatest fighter of all time. However, you know, during those times when he was embracing that grind, getting up at 5 and 6 o'clock in the morning to improve the things, now he's a multimillionaire sponsored by Burger King. He lives in a big house. He's already established everything he needs to establish. He's going to go down as one of the greatest of all time. What is the motivation? I believe the motivation is he is just a fighter at heart. This is what I do. This is what excites me. And the challenge that lies ahead with Michael Bisping, I think it's a good fight. And I'm going to prove to everybody that in 2016 that Anderson Silva is still relevant. We'll see, and that, that is the question, and uh, I hope our friend George St. Pierre is watching this fight. 
Because if it doesn't go that way, there is your example. Now, Mike Pyle was not a champion, but Mike Pyle's at 40. And this weekend, we saw how good that guy looked. Still in there. I, I, he can look at it and goes, I have so much skills and experience that these young guys, they're, they're no match for me. He can go in with that belief. Michael Bisping has been fighting for a long time fearlessly against the best guys in the world. Michael Bisping is a hard fight. Anderson Silva can lose this fight. Yeah. If he doesn't take it very seriously, if he's not at his best, he's going to lose this fight. If that happens, we know what the story of motivation is. If he goes in there, Anderson Silva at his best is in a state of play. Mm -hmm. This is a game. This is a game that I get to show just how magical I am. I have to go in there and have fun and do brilliant things in front of the world. If he goes in like that, yes, he can go in and, and put Michael Bisping down on the ground and laying on his back wondering what happened. Anderson Silva happened. But if he isn't in that state, he can lose this fight very easily. What would you say are, how would you project UFC 200 looks if if Conor McGregor, Anderson Silva get out of their next fights relatively unscathed, win or lose. Conor McGregor versus they... Anderson Silva. <laughs> well, I'm not yeah. saying that, but in individual parts, can you see both of them being at UFC 200? Do you think that that turnaround is asking a lot, specifically of Anderson Silva? Yeah, I think it just it depends on, on what happens uh, in the fight with Michael Bisping. Again, for the most part, Michael Bisping is... I want you to jump to conclusions. Yeah, okay, I'm some got, bold that, assumptions. That, 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 yes, again, if you're trying to make a huge card, just like UFC 100 was, this is what you want. You want some of your biggest names, being Conor McGregor and Anderson Silva, on the card. If you can get Ron on the card, if you can get Holly Holm on the card, you want as many of yeah. the biggest stars in your organization on that card. Yeah, and but Anderson Silva absolutely needs to look mind-blowing. You know, Anderson Silva who kind of squeaks one out, or an Anderson Silva who had the performance against Nick Diaz. I don't think you only have 20 slots on that card. Mm -hmm. I don't think the Nick Diaz Anderson Silva, uh, who had the erectile dysfunctions, I guess. <laughs> I guess maybe that was part of it. Uh, he, uh, you don't want him on that. But Anderson Silva who goes out there and completely dominates like the Anderson Silva of all. Yeah, you want that guy on there. I also uh, wanted to discuss some fights that were made official over the weekend for the UFC's next Fox card coming up April 16th in Tampa, Florida. It's going to be headlined by the return of Khabib Nurmagomedov oh, yeah. after a long layoff, taking on Tony Ferguson, who's been incredible at 155 pounds. We've also got a fight that has been five years in the making with Mauricio Shogun Rua and Rashad Evans, and as well, Dan Henderson, Leota Machida fighting at 185 pounds. Uh, and as well, a rematch involving Rose Nami Yunus and Tisha Torres. This, to me, is a pretty solid put-together Fox card. Yeah, I like the, the Rashad Shogun fight. Two former champions have specific styles. They, they know where they're at. And I think it's a meaningful fight for 205 pounds. So, again, I think that the one thing we all look at Shogun, we look at his past career, I mean, the career that he's living at right now, but when he fought in pride, everybody said, oh, this is the superstar. This is the guy that was able to bridge that gap with Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. But is he still evolving? We've heard that, you know, he you know, made a lot of money, became a champion, and got comfortable. Is he still em embracing that grind? Now, we do know that he left uh, the comfort of Brazil to go and train in the U.S. Is he still doing that? Is he still looking to improve as a mixed martial artist? Because Rashad Evans, the training with all the people that he trains with, the Black Zillions, you're just going to get better training with Anthony Johnson and uh, Tyrone Spong and all the animals that train down there. So I think that this is a very important fight for both guys. The, the fight on that one that I like uh, is the, the, eagle. Uh, the eagle, man. So I'm doing this breakdown for Rafael Dos Anjos versus Conor McGregor. And to do it, you want to go back and look at all the performances. So I go back and look at Conor McGregor versus uh, Nurmagomedov, which is the last time he fought, which is going to be going on two years ago. Holy crap, is this guy good. Like, really, really good. Because we've seen what RDA has become. And and the way he took it to him, the way he kept him guessing, the way he manhandled him when he got to his back, in the grappling, in the striking, in the range, in the thinking, beat him in all those places. He's a real, like something very special. Nobody's ever beaten him. And my man Tony Ferguson just looks like a new kind of fighter, a new kind of thinker, innovating in, within positions. And that's a cool fight. That's, <laughs> that's the fight for me. Dan Henderson, I mean, this could be, I mean, a loss here. This could be his unofficial audition for Bellator. Yeah, and Dan Henderson doesn't care. Dan Henderson's been doing this for a long, long time. It's like, yeah, whether I fight for Strike Force or for Pride or for the UFC or the WEC or Bellator or 1FC, I don't care. 
pay me money, I'll go knock somebody out. That's really Dan Henderson's uh, opinion. And uh, again, he would not be afraid to go and uh, battle for Bellator. He's got a relationship with Scott Coker. So I think this is, a, this is just another fight for Dan Henderson. I'm surprised that he would take this fight with Leota Machida, but at the same time, it is what it is. Might have to bring my friend Clint White back to do another <laughs> uh, Dan Hando Henderson's greatest hits. Might have to do that. Yeah, very deep card in Tampa. I mean, you, you get Michael Chiesa, Benil Dariush yeah. on the undercard. The fact that Hakan Diaz is fighting Cub Swanson. I mean, this, Ooh, is, right. this is a very loaded card uh, coming up in April, as is the February 27th card that will be airing here on Fight Network, headlined by Anderson Silva and Michael Bisping. We will have tons of coverage going into February the 27th, but now we have more of Fight News Now coming your way.